What's up, guys? The same game break here. Here to bring you to rah 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 season two, part three, episode eight. Please let it be eight. Fuck it. We're gonna do. We're doing it live. Don't matter. This is about this is a story about how the Dulahan got a head back together. Dulahan got a head back together. <laughs> oh god, this episode actually is kind of confusing. There's only one aspect that's confusing, but it's the aspect that's like alluded to throughout the episode. So uh, as we learned in this episode, Celta gets her head back and apparently has lost her memories because she didn't recognize Xia and she kind of just acted like everything. She was like. It's like, don't ever speak to me again, human. And she just walks down her black staircase to hell, I guess. I don't fucking know. So, uh, you know, she's still a dual haunt, so obviously my logic was like, well, is she going to put the head? No, she's not going to put the head back on. The head is on. I actually am still wondering. Well, I think she talks through her mouth now, I guess. I don't fucking know. I guess you can do both. Well, yeah, because she wasn't, before she talked, but really what we were hearing was her internal monologue where she just had to type everything out. So I'm, I'm, I hope she's still salty. I hope, I hope, and and I think she is. Is that Shinra is gonna be the thing that brings her back to like, Jurara salty because Shinra, we see in the preview, although eyes a little like Saika is around. So I'm thinking that might be the way of bringing her back to reality. Also, Shinra's dad, the motherfucking G. Um, <laughs> Uh, we also find out in this episode that, um, well, I would say we find out, but more so this is the confusing part of the episode. So, we're hearing a monologue from Tom the entire time, which is interesting for all characters. I didn't think we would hear it from Tom, but fuck it, that's fine. We hear a monologue from Tom as he's eating at a Russia sushi with Simon in them, and, uh, we find out the guy, the guy that's been hanging around Isaiah is from the Akasawa group. The older guy that was with the Karate Girl. Speaking of the Karate Girl, Verona and Kujuri versus Karate Girl. I don't care. It's like, she's like, I'm not interested in the fight. I don't care if Shizuo and Isaiah fight. But for whatever reason, I don't feel like interrupting their fight. I don't feel like I should let you interrupt their fight. Although, let's be honest. If Verona, and I honestly think Verona could probably take her ass. Uh, primarily due to the fact that the only reason why Verona might be struggling on some level is because she's been injured. Because I think Verona could get in that ass. You tell me, you tell me a Russian, a Russian hit woman couldn't t Bruh, please. Also, you know what sucks? I like the Karate Girl's outfit designed by, you know, nothing of the character. So it's kind of hard for me to be like, oh, it's like, I don't care. Whoop her ass. Whoop her ass! <laughs> Something's wrong with me today. Um... The biggest confusion of the episode, though, is there. it seems like there's this Psycho army wandering around. We also, I guess, get a reveal of what the hell happened to Kodaka. Psycho. Psycho. Somebody, it was a Psycho. Probably Psycho children are the ones who hit him. But then brings up the question, well, whose Psycho children was it? Because this whole army situation is just broken out. But Kodaka got hit, like, at the, at the end of Season 2, Part 2. So, my question is... Who, what psycho, who psycho army hit him? Was it Isaiah's psycho army? Was it Kudri's? Or was it, and I don't think it was Henri's. But then that also goes into the current psycho army that's going around, that's completely flooding the city as of right now. We see the kid with the glasses from that drug ring and Harna, who seems to be under control, taking orders from this guy w with a beard and a mustache. And I'm sitting there going... Well, the last time we saw Harna, she was knocked the fuck out with her dad near Takashi. But Takashi doesn't look like that. But this was obviously the guy that was talking to the kid in the glasses about how he knew who hit Kodaka. So he's obviously the one responsible for it. But there's nothing to make me think that he has psycho powers. But he kind of has to. But my, my thought process is, is that Takashi? But part of me thinks it's not. But that's the only way this makes sense because... How did how did he get his hands on Harna? Because the last person who we saw who had his hands on Harna 
was Takashi, but that doesn't look like Takashi. Unless Takashi's working with the individual. So if someone can explain to me, is that Takashi or not? Because I don't... Part of me thinks it's not. But the only, but Takashi is the only person that makes sense for this whole thing to work. It also brings the question why he has such aggression against Shizuo. Now, granted, Shizuo makes a lot of enemies because he's a dick. But still... He, he's he's got to be someone who's been important at some point, so if anyone can explain it to me. And Takashi doesn't have any issues with Shizuo as of I know of. So my question is, who is the guy with the beard and mustache who has control over Haruna currently? Because my thought process is that that should be Takashi, but that don't look like Takashi. Also, Chikage is running around throwing fire and shit. Finally got me caught up to pick up the motherfucking phone. And they're going to go meet. And I knew this This is kind of leading to the final showdown with Mikado. So I'm pretty sure Mikado's going to go alone to, to get Masaomi. Because even though him and Masaomi are fighting, he does not want Masaomi's life to be threatened. Although Mikado's obviously away. And Mikado's killed me. This episode was weird for Mikado and me personally. Because he, 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 you, he, it's just more scenes where he's like... He's, so we find out the thing that Izumi gave him was a gun. Which really isn't too shocking. It's obvious that they're trying to get him in a position where he gets framed for some shit that he didn't fucking do. That's what they're tr they're trying to put him into a situation where he causes an issue so they can take advantage of the situation. That's the whole fucking point. But the interesting thing about it all is is that even though Mikado's mind is relatively warped right now, where it's not the same as it used to be as he's going through his internal thought process, you get the scene with him in the gun and he's like. So what do I hold to like to shoot it? Like where would I put my finger where I'm about to shoot it, but not actually shoot it? Just like as like like where's the trigger? Like the nigga's looking for the trigger on the gun, and it's like, bruh, what? Like he's so weirdly innocent while at the same time being inherently disturbed. It's such a it's such a weird fucking thing to look at. That entire sequence was like, bruh, this is this this is the man who's running around with all these little plans trying to purge the dollars, and the man doesn't even understand how a fucking gun works. What the fuck is... <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Also, apparently, Chikage knows about Namine and Seiji, because Chikage threw out some, like, oh, you think Seiji be happy with you losing your shit all over the internet? And she's like, how do you do it? <laughs> I, I was going to show like, a scene of her banging on the fucking keyboard. But he's like, would Seiji be happy about it? And she's like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I want like a gif. I want a gif of her just fucking banging on the keyboard because the name. <laughs> Seiji, he's like, because he, 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 he goes, he goes, you think Seiji be cool with this? You just, you have to see her trail off into some anger gibberish shit. And she's just like, <laughs> I, want to, I just want, I want, to, I want a video or a picture or something. I'm probably just fucking losing this shit on the keyboard being like, God fucking damn it! <laughs> Me caught up! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Also, Kodak is fine. And the fight between his eye and Shizuo has begun. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I see. I was like, I should have. It was funny as shit in the way I see the subtitles. The subtitles come. We were talking about Seiji Road. <laughs> she, just she just descends into gibberish. And it's like. Bruh, she was, she got fucked up. She was like, you son of a bird. You can tell she started typing too fast and her hands got caught up. And she was so funny. It was like, oh, I'm not, I'm sorry to dwell on it. But later, you gotta understand, now as a character, I have no interest in, in whatsoever. Like, she's the, I love to see her get mad and frustrated because she's, she's such an unlikable character to me. She has her moments, but they're never anything good. It's just to put her in an indifferent status. So every time I see her get mad and flip out, it's fucking funny. So when Chicago was like, you wouldn't want Seiji to know about all of this. And she just, I could just see her, I could see her on the fucking computer typing that shit out and her hands just ran together. She fucking went, God damn it. <laughs> like she got so mad she couldn't type straight. 
<laughs> she was like, don't you bring my throat, god damn it! <laughs> Start banging on the keyboard, Mikado! <laughs> Shit. Oh, that shit was gold. Anyways, leave your thoughts and comments in the comments section below. And do your best, do your best nominate impression in the comments. Good video again for God damn it, Mikado. <laughs> Woo, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and if anyone understands that whole Takashi, not Kakashi thing, let me know, because that, that's probably the most confusing part of the episode. Good episode, that was probably the funniest fucking moment so far this season. It shouldn't be, but it's so fucking funny. Uh, and uh, look forward to Shizuo versus uh, Isaiah next week. So, it's a game, play to win, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. <laughs> Here, God damn